Hey everybody, this is Professor Johnson. I'm going to show you today how to do a simple process flowchart using draw.io. So you can see that I've gone to www.draw.io and the first thing that comes up is a pop-up screen that asks me where I want to save my chart or my diagram. So I'm going to save it to my device. So I'm going to click on that and click create new diagram. I need to title my diagram or my chart. So I'm going to title that process flowchart 1. And then I'm going to click create. Before I do that, I just want to note the templates here. There are lots of different templates that draw.io has already set up. It's going to be easiest for me just to use the, the basic template here because it has all of the flowchart symbols that I'll need uh, for my basic high-level flowchart. So we'll just use that basic setup. So now you can see we've got our canvas here. This is what they call our canvas. And we also have all of our flowchart symbols over here. Lots of extra ones that we won't use in this example. Uh, but it certainly has everything that we have listed in Collier and Evans on page 146 for the basic flowchart symbols. So you can see that we have a rectangle for a basic uh, work activity. We have a triangle indicating a wait time. We have, a, in this case, a circle. Collier and Evans listed as an ellipse, but we've got a circle for beginning and ending our process. We have a diamond for, for indicating a decision that needs to be made. And then we have some lines for connecting our, connecting our different process steps. We'll access them in a different way rather than using these symbols, but you can see these symbols are over here as well. Finally, we have text, and we'll need to enter text a couple of times too. So let's get started. I'm putting together a process flowchart. The fl flowchart I'm going to make is a basic insurance claim submissions process. So it is a service-related process, uh, and I'll narrate that as we go along. First thing we're going to do is zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing here uh, for, our, uh, for our video. Now I'm going to first start our process. So I just click, you can see I just clicked on the symbol and it appeared automatically on my canvas. I'm going to drag that over here a little bit by just uh, drag, clicking and hold and, and dragging it over. Uh, now I want to label this. So I'm going to label this. I'm just going to label it while it's highlighted here in the blue as start process. So that's all there is to it. Uh, once I click somewhere outside of the symbol, then we're ready to go. Now I'm going to drag over my first activity, which is this rectangle. So I'm going to click and drag. And you can see it comes over. And my first activity is submit the claim. So I'm going to type in submit claim. And we have it there. I'm going to click outside the symbol, and you can see it appears with its black box. Now, I want to connect both of these processes with an arrow, both these process steps with an arrow. And so you can see as I get close here to this symbol, that little marks show up. Those are fixed marks on every one of our symbols that we can use to connect a, uh, a line to. And you can see when I select one, a little green box ends up around it. The same thing will happen over here in my rectangle. You can see I can connect to any one of these fixed points. So I'm going to start with my circle, because I want the arrow to, to begin here but end at my next activity step. So I'm going to start there, click there. You can see it starts to draw a little line. And when I get a green, line, green box with my arrow over here, I'm going to release it. And you can see that we have an arrow. And that arrow is connected to that fixed point. So wherever I drag this symbol, that arrow is going to stay connected to that point. So for example, if I click down here and drag it, you can see that the arrow comes with it. So this is really convenient. I'm going to undo that, though, because I want to keep that there. OK, so that's my first step, is submitting the claim. Now I'm going to have a next step, and that's uh, the gesture writes the report. So I'm going to take another activity rectangle here, bring it over. And I'm going to put adjuster writes report. There we go. That's a simple enough step. And I'm going to add my next activity in here as well. And that's actually a waiting activity. And it's waiting for documents. 
So I'm going to put that in. And say wait for documents. Okay. And I'll click on this. There we go. Now I'm going to connect these uh, connect these activities as well. So we'll do the same thing we did last time. Take my cursor, wait till I have a little green box, drag it over to here, wait till I have the arrow with the little green box, and voila, we have it. Do that again over here on this side. Arrow with a little green box, arrow with a little green box, and we've got it again. So we've got our uh, got our all of our activities connected, and we know the direction the activity is going. Our process is going. The next activity we have is actually a decision that needs to be made and the decision that is made is is this claim less than a thousand dollars or more than a thousand dollars so it's a question so we're going to take a decision box a diamond drag it over here we have that set up and our question is uh, is claim less than one thousand dollars or greater than $1,000. And there we, have our, there we have our activity. And that is indeed a question or a decision that needs to be made. So let's connect these. So we have our activities connected to our decision. And the diamond gives us several options uh, in terms of where our process can go. In this particular question, there are two options. Uh, if the claim is less than $1,000, it's going to go in one direction. If the claim is more than $1,000, or the process is going to take another direction. So if the claim is less than $1,000, it's going to go to the small claims review folks. So we'll put here review small claims. And if it's greater than $1,000, we're going to have a different, different choice. And that's going to go to large claim review and fraud check. So those are our two options. Now we need to connect both of these options to this decision symbol. So we'll do that the same way we've done. We've connected the other, uh, the other activities. We'll take our cursor, wait until we have a green box there on this particular uh, particular point of our diamond, and drag it over to the review small claims. So this is our less than a thousand dollar choice here. And so to, we need to label this though so we know exactly what this is. So to do that, I'm going to go to text, drag that over, and put it right next to the line here. And in this text, I'm going to put this as our less than $1,000 claim. And there we have it. Now you can see that that text box was a little small, right? So let's click on this again. Click on one of these blue points, stretch it out. And now we know what option this is. And I'm going to just click on it and drag it a little bit closer to the line so we don't get confused about what's going on here. Okay, so there we have our less than $1,000 process route. Now we need to link the large claim uh, to the large claim review and fraud checkbox. So we'll do that the same way, except we'll take it off a different point in our diamond, and we'll drag it over here. You can see it connects to our large claim review. This is a little confusing though because we have these lines overlapping, right? So I'm going to take my large claim review box and drag it down a bit and you can see that that uh, separates these lines which makes things a little clearer. So now we have two different steps or, or two different options linked to this decision. We also need to label our greater than $1,000 claim. So I'm going to take that, drag it over, take the text, drag it over here and we'll make it greater than $1,000. And again, our text box is a little small, so let's make that bigger again. We'll stretch it out, and now we have that option. So we're looking pretty good here so far. We've started our process, the claim is submitted, the adjuster writes the report, we'll wait for documents, what the documents are here, now we have to decide is the claim 
greater or less than $1,000, and we have the two options. So, after that, there's another decision that's made, and that decision is the claim approved or rejected. So, we have our decision box, diamond, and here we have approve or reject claim. That is the decision to be made. I'm just scrolling up here so we can see where we're at. So again, I'll click outside of that symbol and we can now connect these, uh, our two options with this approve or reject the claim step. So again, I'll go up to the large claim, have that come in here to this side of the diamond. I'll take our small claim, have that come in up here to this uh, side of the diamond. There we go. And now we need to, we have our two options, so we need to have an approve, uh, approve option and a reject option. So if it's approved, we're going to pay the claim. So that's good news. So let's take another activity symbol here, and we'll put pay claim if it's approved. So let's connect the approved option to the payment of the claim, and we'll connect it right there. And we need to label that path. So again, I'm going to take the text, and this is approved. Again, we're a little small. Let's stretch that out. And then we need to create an activity if the claim is rejected. So we'll get the activity here. And if it's rejected, we are going to send a rejection letter. And we need to connect that to our decision box. So we'll click outside the, the, the symbol we just used go up to our decision diamond, connect it to our rejection letter. Okay, so now we have both of these items set up and we're ready to go here. I'm going to drag this down just to make it a little more symmetrical. And finally, now we're ready to end our process. So we've either paid the claim or we've sent a rejection letter. There's nothing else to do with this insurance claim, so we'll take our ending symbol down here, which is also a starting symbol, but in this case we're ending, and we'll just type in ending end process. And of course we need to connect to that, so we'll connect to it the same way we've done all the others. We have a connector there, and a connector here. And there we have created our pro simple process flow chart for a uh, high-level insurance claim process. Let's zoom out here so we can see the whole thing. And there you have it. So now, if you wanted to print this out or access it outside of draw.io, you have several options to do that. You can go up to File, and you can go to Download As, and you can see all your different options here. For downloading into a format that is appropriate for uploading to our discussion boards, etc. I'm going to recommend you use the PDF format, uh, as that is the most uh, readable and also enlarges, uh, enlarges the most cleanly and with the highest level of resolution. So you can see that it just downloaded that document to my computer. So now I have it in my downloads file, and I can upload it wherever I want to do or do whatever else I want to do with a standard PDF file. So that is how to create a process flowchart using draw.io.